Hey everybody, just wanted to give you a quick update on how things are going with my Milo project. Uh, like most people, I am still waiting for my kit to come in. Hopefully that's going to be within a couple weeks, but that's giving me plenty of time to do some prep work. I'm very happy that I have all of my printed parts done except for the TPU feet. I'm waiting for some new filament to come in to test, so that'll be done pretty soon. Overall, I am really happy with the way my parts turned out. Here is the spindle cover. These are about half a kilogram of filament between them. These are printed off at 12 top and bottom layers, uh, six perimeters, and I did 40% gyroid infill, so they should be plenty strong. I also got the Oof. ballast box done. You can see the forbidden peanut butter is in there. That dark spot is from where I tested to see if the resin had cured using my finger, which I, I don't recommend. So this was actually pretty easy. I started off by doing a water test. I let it sit for a couple hours when I didn't see any leaking or seepage through the plastic uh, that told me that it was waterproof, which is great. I had good layer adhesion. So I made my mix of epoxy and decomposed granite. You want it to be, I, I've heard it described as a, a runny Play-Doh. So you definitely want to get as much of the sand or granite material in as possible with just enough epoxy as a binder to make it all solid because the granite is going to have more weight than the epoxy. I used some craft paper and painter's tape to mask off the top of the ballast box, then put my material in. I used a drill press vise to hold the ballast box upright and got it leveled and let the epoxy cure for 24 hours. And now I have this part, it is really hefty. The epoxy is completely cured and this should hopefully eliminate some resonances within the Z column. The other thing that I did was I used this project as an excuse to build myself a VLMP. Uh, if you're not familiar, this is a product designed by Vector3D. It holds your soldering iron uh, perpendicular to your work surface and gives you a nice, perfectly straight path for when you're pressing in your heat sets. I was really impressed with the quality of the STL design. All of the holes were really great. Nothing needed to be chased uh, to get screws through. There is one captive nut that pressed in very easily, but is very secure, uh, which is back here. You use a stack of washers to set the weight to counterbalance your soldering iron. So you can tune it for the action that you want. Uh, I also found these clips on printables to help secure the cord for the soldering iron. There are grooves designed into the top of the unit for zip ties to permanently attach the cable, but I'm going to be putting this soldering iron on and taking it off. Uh, I don't have one dedicated just for heat pressing. So these clips are a nice way to hold the cable in place and then when I'm done, they just pop out and I can pull my iron and off we go. So that's been a really nice addition. I'm also trying to figure out what I'm doing as far as the workspace for the unit. Um, I'm going to have to rearrange the garage a little bit, probably build a workbench. I'm trying to find a way to build something that would be stationary. Uh, my original idea was to put it on a wheeled bench, but the unit itself is going to be over 60 pounds, I believe. By the time you get a roughly four by three foot workbench on casters with 60 pounds plus an enclosure, it's gonna get a little unwieldy to move around. So if I can, I'm going to go ahead and do a stationary bench, which I will update you as soon as I figure what that is going to be. The other thing that I'm starting to work on is unlike the 3D printers that I have, that have some kind of screen built in to run them. Uh, the flyboard in the Milo doesn't have that capability. It does have a web server, 
but I don't want to have to bring a tablet out to deal with uh, running the machine. So I have ordered a touchscreen monitor. I think it's a 14 inch or 15 inch. And I'm going to dedicate a Raspberry Pi or maybe even one of the Big Tree Tech Pies to essentially just be the front end for the machine. So once that monitor comes in, I can start doing my setup and just get that up and running. Uh, the one that I got does have screws for a VESA mount. So when I get to the point that I build an enclosure, I might be able to just put a mount right on the enclosure itself to hold that screen. Otherwise, I'll just build a cable harness and be able to put that on the bench next to the machine or figure out some place to stash it. And one last thing, there's a user on the Millennium Machines Discord server named Ray, who is now part of the project, that's put together alternate methods of assembling the Milo 1.5 where you don't have to take the carriages off the linear rails. This seems to really make assembly a lot easier. So if you go to the Milo Discord server, you should be able to find the information on Ray's guide to assembly. Uh, it looks like if you follow the current manual where you have to pull the carriages off the rails, attach them to the plates, and then slide the rails in, that can be very fiddly to get everything perfectly lined up. So being able to do it without taking the carriages off should make assembly a lot easier. And then once you have everything loosely screwed together, then you can start working with making sure that your two axes are perfectly parallel. Just something to look at uh, if you're like me and you're waiting for your kit, you're trying to read the manual and figure out what you're gonna do once you have the hardware in front of you. It'd be great to get that knowledge before you start turning screws. So that's kind of where I am now. Thanks for checking in and I will have an update for you again soon.